Hey guys, it's Kyla at the MJC, and I'm here today uh, walking you guys through some of the name change paperwork. Uh, specifically, this is the name change petition uh, for minor children who are under the age of 14. So if you uh, either are or if you have uh, a minor child who is 14 or older, you'll want to switch into the adult name change packet. Uh, but before we get going, as always, just a reminder that nothing in this video is intended to be legal advice. It's a video, so I'm not able to analyze your specific situation and to evaluate what's going on and be sure this is the right process for you or just anything like that. So if you have any questions like that, I would definitely recommend getting some legal advice. You can get brief legal advice for free here in Milwaukee County through the Marquette Volunteer Legal Clinics. If you're not located in Milwaukee County, you can contact your Clerk of Courts to find out what resources are available in your area. All right, so let's hop into the form. As with many of the forms we fill out, right at the top here, we're going to put in the county. And so this is the county where you will be filing, and it is most likely, uh, well, it is the county where you live. So it's gonna be Milwaukee. Uh, it's what I'm gonna put because that's where the MJC is located. So then here on this next line, right below in the matter of the name change of, you're going to put the name of the child whose name you are changing. Uh, so we'll go here and uh, put in the child's name. Uh, so again, those of you who've watched our <laughs> series of videos know that we've got, uh, this is one of the children who shows up a lot in our videos. You'll make sure you put the first name here, middle name here, last name here. This should be the child's current name. So not the name that you would like them to go to, but rather um, the current name that you are trying to change. And then here we're going to enter the petitioner. So the petitioner is you, is the parent who is trying to fill, or who is hopefully successfully filling this out. Um, if you are not the parent of the minor child in question, uh, that's definitely a point to get legal advice. So if you're say a legal guardian and you're trying to change the child's name, um, that's a great opportunity to get some legal advice. But again, we're assuming that this is being filled out by uh, either one or both of the child's parents. So here, put Jane, uh, Jane Doe is mom. If just one parent is petitioning, then you can leave this co-petitioner line blank. If both parents are petitioning, so if both of Sally's parents are signing this petition wanting to change her name, then we'll put one parent's name here and the other parent's name here. And it is not, um, the order of the names is not super important. So um, if they're both petitioning, we could have put John on the first line and Jane on the second line. Um, it's, it's up to you sort of which parent goes on which line. But if there's only one of you, then you'll just fill the petitioner line. Uh, and so since what I think we see most commonly in our clinics is just one parent making the petition, I'll go ahead and fill it out that way. But if you, there's no reason why you can't have both of these petitioner lines filled out. You don't have a case number yet, so you'll leave that line blank. Here on number one, uh, you have got, basically you're gonna indicate your relationship to the, the child. So this petition is brought by this person. How are they related, or these people, how are they related to the child? Um, so if I had filled in both of these lines, if it were both John and Jane petitioning, I could say both living parents. Um, or if John had passed away, then um, even if Jane were doing it, she would be the sole surviving parent. So if one of the parents has passed away and the living parent is now petitioning, or the sole adoptive parent. So if you adopted your child and you adopted as a uh, single parent, uh, then you'd be in A. So A is if both parents are bringing it, if uh, one of the parents has passed away and the living parent is bringing it, or if uh, you were the sole adoptive parent of the minor child, it's gonna be A. B is going to be a situation where only one of the parents is bringing the petition, but there are two living parents and paternity has been established. So um, here we would check this one if say John, so again, uh, John is our other parent in the situation. If John had signed the blue sheet, the blue paternity acknowledgement sheet in the hospital, 
Um, that could be one. If you've done an, an administrative paternity proceeding, uh, that could be a way in which you get paternity established. If you've ever had a court case that ordered uh, custody, placement, child support, anything like that, then paternity has likely been established. Uh, if you were married at the time the child was born, uh, most likely the marital presumption applies. So that could be another way that paternity would be established. So basically, uh, this would be if you are one of the parents and the other other parent is still alive and paternity has been established through one of the many mechanisms through which it can be established. That would be B. B is the most common one we see, so that's where most people end up. Uh, usually most of our clients are under A or B. Uh, C is if you are the mother of the minor child and the child is a non-marital child, so that just means that they were not born while you were married. Uh, and they have not been adopted, and uh, you as the parents have never been married, and paternity has not been established. So if there's never been a court case, um, the other parent is not on the birth certificate, the other parent never signed uh, the blue sheet in the hospital, all those sorts of things, then you might end up under C. Um, and do make sure, I mean, you wanna make sure you're in that situation. I know some folks will come to us and say, well, you know, I don't want the other parent involved or I wish paternity hadn't been established or they don't act like a parent anyway. This is not getting into sort of, are they a good parent or a helpful parent or anything like that. It's just getting into, has paternity been established by the courts um, or through an administrative process of some sort. Last but not least, you do have D. D is what you'll check if you are the legal guardian of the child and both parents are dead or if their parental rights have been terminated. Um, so again, this isn't just, you have to not only be the legal guardian, but also be in a situation where both parents have passed away or their, their rights have been terminated by a court. Um, so I, we do really recommend if you're a legal guardian, just making sure that uh, you get some advice because it, it just can be a little trickier. So anyway, in our situation, we know that Jane is one of the parents and we know that the other parent is alive and paternity has been established, so we're going to be under B. Here, you will put the petitioner's address, so I'm going to put the person listed here's address. And it should include the city, state, and zip. So we've got that. If you have a co-petitioner, so if we still had John's name listed here, if both parents were planning to sign this, we would list their address on this line. Just like we listed the petitioners here, we'd list the other persons here. Since we do not have a co-petitioner, we left that blank, we will leave this line blank as well. Here, you're going to put the county where the minor child lives. I know that feels repetitive because you had to put the county up here as well, um, but that's what we have to do. Uh, welcome to bureaucracy at work. And then here, you're going to put the child's address. For a lot of people, it will be the same address as either the petitioner or the co-petitioner, um, but if for some reason the child's address is different, make sure you list where the child primarily lives. Uh, here we are going to put the child's birthday. Uh, this was 2019. And the state where the child was born. If the child was not born in the United States, you can put the country where they were born. So we'll just fill that in. But for most of you, it's going to be a state. And I would even wager that for most folks, it's going to be Wisconsin. So I'll go ahead and list Wisconsin there. Uh, here, it wants to know the name that appears on the child's birth certificate. Often, that is going to match the legal name that we have up here. Um, but if for some reason the child's name on the birth certificate is different uh, than their current legal name, uh, you'll want to list the birth certificate name here. And you'll make sure first name on the first line, middle name on the second line, last name on the third line. Here, you're going to put the state where the birth certificate was issued. And just like above, if your uh, birth certificate is issued from a foreign country, you can list the country that issued the birth certificate. Uh, on this line, number six will indicate whether the minor child is a sex offender. Um, I assume for a very, very, very large percentage of people, it's going to be that the child is not a sex offender. If for some reason uh, the child you're filling this out for is a convicted sex offender who has had to register, uh, then you would probably want to get some legal advice. There may be uh, restrictions and other things, so anytime you're trying to change the name of someone who has been a sex offender, 
uh, you do want to get some legal advice. Here, this is the name that you would like to go to. So this is the name you would like the child to have now. Um, and you can change any of these lines. So here I just, oops, and I spelled it wrong. Make sure you spell it right. You know, name changes especially, spelling's really important. Um, then here I just changed the last name. So you can see I just said that Jane wanted to change the child's last name, but you can change any part of it. So if she wanted it to be, you know, um, to be Jessica Jane Doe, like you can change first name, you can ask to change at least, first name, middle name, last name, that's all fine. Um, but we'll go to, she's just trying to change the child's surname. Uh, and then here you're going to put the reason why you would like to change that name. So, you know, um, So here it's just your reasoning, uh, just a sentence or two about what's going on. You know, Jane could say that the, or I guess I should be specific and say Sally's dad. You know, Sally's dad is no longer in the picture and I would prefer her to have my last name. Um, you know, if it is whatever your reasoning is, it's really just you writing down in a couple of sentences why you would like to change the child's name. Um, do keep in mind, if you are um, filling this out, that the other parent does get a copy of this, so um, obviously they'll get to see what you wrote. So if you're writing that they are the scum of the earth and all that, it's your prerogative to do so, but um, you may want to consider or get some advice about what might happen if, you know, if what you write maybe makes them more likely to object. In any case, uh, here, you're, if you want to change the child's birth certificate, to reflect the new name, you'll check eight. Uh, you can only do that if your child has a Wisconsin birth certificate. If they have a birth certificate in a different state, you won't check eight. Uh, if they do have a Wisconsin one, but you don't wanna change it, you won't check eight, but you will check eight if they have a Wisconsin birth certificate that you'd like to change. And then here, the signature lines, as always, you'll just fill in your name, your address, which I'm going to borrow from up here. I assume all of you know your addresses, but since Jane is a fictional person, sometimes I forget her address. Um, here, you'll put in your email address here. If you don't have an email address, no worries. Uh, you will just uh, leave that line blank. You'll put in your phone number here. If up above, you had a co-petitioner, you'll list the co-petitioner's name here. So if we had put um, John here and we had put his address here, then we would also have him here and both people would sign it. All right, well, that is all for this petition. I'll be back in a bit with the additional documents that you need to do to get this process done. But until then, Thank you all for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. If you do have additional questions, you can find uh, us during non-pandemic times in room G9 of the Milwaukee County Courthouse, where we are happy to provide information about filing, answer questions about filling out the forms, help you fill out the forms, and to provide uh, referrals to different legal resources. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you all go out and represent yourselves well.